Hey guys, today we are going to talk about reserve list card and foil. It's a very unique topic and these eight cards have never been higher than they are today. So their price increase has been steady and I honestly see these as collectible items. I'm going to show you eight of them. There are many more, but the unique characteristics, they are reserve list cards. Some of them have been reprinted and only available in foil via this set. And they're probably not going to be reprinted again anytime soon because of the current atmosphere around the reserve list. Back when I played Magic, no one actually expected a reserve list to stay. It was a oral promise made back at that time, 10, 15 years ago. And the player base was like, whatever. Magic was not doing well. It actually had to close many of its stores. It had Wizard of the Coast stores, which then had to close down because sales, I mean, it's ironic, right? That Wizard of the Coast expects a local game store to be able to be profitable, but having their own store, they are not. That's another issue. But we all expected a reserve list to go, at least in my group of friends. It did not go. And in fact, these promos and these from the vault, these DCIs, these judge promos, and there's probably a few other ones I'm missing, are gone. They're not going to continue to reprint them, which makes these unique collectible items. Again, if you wanted a foil version of Glaciers, this is, I believe, the only foil copy because it came from Alliance and it's on the reserve list. I don't feel like they're going to reprint this in foil, especially given if they were to reprint cards, they wouldn't start at this card, right? So love the card. Very beautiful. It is just gorgeous art, probably worth buying. Again, all eight of these cards are at the highest point today. If you can find a deal, you can do some type of trade. It makes sense. But these are the type of cards that you should keep your eyes out. Um, Ooh, eyes out. That kind of sounds creepy. I'm, I'm just going to leave it like that. Memory Jar. Love this card. This card is on the reserve list. It does have a foil version. The original version for, is from Urza's Legacy. Urza's Saga had the first foil, and that was the Lightning Dragon, or the first foil released uh, at the pre-release, which is the Lightning Dragon. I remember receiving the card and saying, all right, this is like worse than Pokemon foils. Why is there not like these shiny stuff like in Pokemon? Because Pokemon at the time was extremely popular. I feel like base set, first edition base set had just came out uh, when Urza Saga was still around. And Memory Jar has a foil, but it also has a reprint from the Vault Relics. I expected from the Vault to have lots of reserve list cards and one day it would have 10 dual lands and the price would be something insane. It would be very similar to another video that might release today. I don't know. I'll just schedule it about what Wizards of the Coast is doing with the Standard League and how stores are taking advantage of that. Another video, nonetheless, they could easily do something like that in a store. Khan Silver Golem. I believe this is from Urza Saga. And... I wanted to make a point that these are just collectible items. If you see the price of this, it's $9. This card is terrible. Like maybe somebody made an EDH deck one time, like one time ago, a tier five EDH deck. But there are way better artifacts to play and many artifacts if you wanted to play them like that, you could play something like a Menarch would be a stronger blue based artifact. However, even this card has has gone up. You look at the incline on the card of all of these cards, they're very steady. And that tells me these are being used as collectible items, which Khan is a collectible item because he is, if you play during the back in the day and you read all the books, he's a central figure of those books. Then New Phyrexia kind of screwed him up. I, I didn't like New Phyrexia's story. It like, was really complicated. It used to be Magic had one book. They didn't have a website to give you stories. They didn't have like the, you know, like manuals. I don't know what, where, or the um, art books, right? Or the Planeswalker books to tell you what's going on. They just had one book, one novel, and you read it, and that was the story. And the novel came with the fat packs. 
Uh, next, I'm gonna talk about one that I love. If you're in Europe, I've been told the euro is 0.9 to one. Like one dollar is equal to 0.9 euros, which seems pretty good. Mox Diamond is gorgeous. This is a beautiful card. And yes, 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 I have the playmat of this card, which is also the most expensive playmat, I believe, still today. Limited to, I believe, 250, you had to do this random thing to win it. Another thing about these promos is some of them have unique art, right? This is Mox Diamond. Mox Diamond is on the reserve list. This is unique art for the Mox Diamond. This is why this card is so valuable. There was a time, it looks like you could have picked it up for $25. Yeah, $25, my goodness. Like this was such an obvious home run at $25. Unique art, foil on a reserve, reserve list card. If somehow you bump into from the vault relics, buy it, just buy it. It's unlikely, you're, unless it's like some insane price, right? Those cards are very good and they are not the only ones. You'll keep your eyes out for these cards because they tend to end up in collections and the people who, if you, paid from the vault relics if you paid for that set you probably thought it was the crappiest set ever because of the foils you have no idea mox diamonds a hundred dollars i can almost guarantee that because when the set came out it wasn't a big deal about the reserve list people were saying the cards are crappier and that's a good way to introduce or to get rid of the reserve list is just to make crappier printings and foil so people were not happy with, and the conditioning of these cards are probably not great. There's a lot of bending. I, there was a lot of bending like a month into it. I can only imagine what the bending is like today if you did not sleeve it. But uh, the judge promo, Wheel of Fortune, and this is the original DCI, also on the reserve list. You see a trend, right? The trend is very positive towards these items. Like the graph for all these items are the same. Yeah, occasionally there's a spike and a dip, but you can see steady growth and very little periods of decline. If it is declining, it just picks straight back up a little later. I truly believe that there are two types of cards. There's cards that people collect and cards that people speculate on. And cards that people collect, they actually put a lot of value on those cards. That would be the Mox Diamond, beautiful art, very unique card. That would be this Wheel of Fortune. Different art. This is the only art I believe this is on because I don't, they can't reprint it. That's the problem, right? If the first reprint has a different artwork, they cannot reprint the card. Therefore, that is the only copy of that artwork and it's $200. Now, one of the most famous ones and the reason I wanted to make this video was I was doing a video yesterday and Judge Promos came up and I was looking at the most pricey Judge Promos and this card has crept up to $650. Oh my goodness, I used to have two copies of this. And I sold it to, um, I, I probably sold it to uh, Star City in Richmond at a Richmond GP uh, a few years, like way back when I was still in school. And I got a good price for it, so I can't really complain, but wow, this card is $650. I can't believe it. And I know a friend who has eight copies of this card. He has eight copies of it. We went to school together. I know he didn't sell it. I'm going to try to get these off him. Uh, for obviously, he is smart. So he knows what the price is. Or, but he's still probably willing to take a discount on it because there's no way he thinks it's $650. So when you have a re reserve list card, Urza Saika does not have any other foil versions of this. This is an EDH staple. Then you have a scenario where the card just gets out of control. This is the example, right? This is what every card that we would put on this list would try to strive to become. That $650 card. Now, am I saying Wheel of Fortune will be $650 one day? No. But I'm saying that there is room for considerable growth in this particular unique, which is foil reserve list cards that don't have any other foil printing. 
and they will not receive any other foil printing because they are on the reserve list and people treat the reserve list a lot different today than they did back then. Whenever I see like a post and people are like really, and it wasn't just good cards, right? Phyrexian Negator. I did want to bring this card up because this is what you're not looking for. The creature power that you can get for two and a black is not five, five. You sacrifice pretty much your whole board. This is a reserve list card that is not valuable, that is in decline, but I still like it because if you truly believe this is a collector's item, this is the type of stuff you will pick up, not the Gayer's Kratos because they are $650. You could literally pick up a hundred copies of this card, which sounds kind of strange, but that's actually what the math comes out to. And yeah, I like I like the fact that today so many people say they hate the reserve list, but there's more support for it today than there was back then. Wizards of Coast could print these reserve list cards whenever they felt like. From the vault, who cares? Judge promo, who cares? And um, I did want to bring up Morphling. Uh, Phyrexian Negator is an interesting one. It slightly higher today than yesterday, but a slight decline. Morphling is not a very strong card, but it is iconic. If you played when I grew up, Morphling was the card that you wanted to open. It was the card that you wanted to have. And everyone, it was the card I believe John Finkel had. So surprising that he's still so good even after so many years. But incredible. And this is why you have a collector's item, Morphling and the Phyrexian Negator. Morphling is not a good card today. Phyrexian Negator is not a good card today. In the past, they were. But I don't remember anyone liking Phyrexian Negator. But I remember a ton of people liking Morphling. And those people now have jobs. They have money. They have supplemental income. If I didn't, if I quit Magic back then and I had to buy a Morphling or a Negator, I would buy the Morphling no problem. Even if the Morphling is way more expensive because that's what I wanted to see. That's what I would like to see. Uh, framed in my office a bunch of Morphlings and that's the deck I wanted to play. I couldn't afford it at the time, but I always wanted to. And that's the effect that Black Lotus has is when a lot of people who could not afford a Black Lotus at the time now make lots of money. Let's say they're doing finance, like actual finance, not MTG finance. I'm talking about like Wall Street. Um, I have a friend who is in Morgan Stanley or not Morgan. Um, what is that? Merrill Lynch. Uh, he's in Merrill Lynch and he just purchased his first Black Lotus and he doesn't play Magic. He wants it as a collector's item. And here's another one that I remember very fondly, the Reigns Hermit. And this price is also very expensive because that's the deck I could afford to play. So if you couldn't afford the Morphling deck, you were subligated to the uh, green token based deck that was somewhat good. But Morphling would beat you every time because you couldn't kill it. This, they could get rid of, they can board wipe. Board wipes were a lot better at the time. Uh, I, I don't remember what was the board wipe in, in Urza. Oh, it was um it was the one in black that was really annoying. The, what was it? It was like the really bad, Pestilence. That was the board wipe we all played. Pestilence and Common. Draft was extremely fun back then in black when you had Dores, you had Pestilence, you had Removal. <laughs> it's just, everyone was in black. Anyway. That's it guys, uh, let me know what you think of these cards and if you own any of them. Mox Diamond is a beautiful card. I need to get my hands on a playset. Just very hard to find. I don't know anyone who has a physical copy. You can obviously find anything online for cheaper, but I like to support my local game stores because if I don't support them, I don't know. If you don't support your local game stores, eh, no one will because they're your local game store. People would just buy from like online, Star City Games, Card Kingdom, TCG Player, internet personalities. Anyway, that's it guys, bye.